by sharing my vulnerabilities, it one, connected with me with my franchise partners, my clients a lot more. It actually held me more accountable and I realized, you know what, I get a step in my game because when you do, then you can dominate your morning, you can dominate your day, you can dominate your week, you can dominate your month, you can dominate your year, and ultimately, my friend, you can dominate your life. Welcome to the Fitness CEO Podcast. Hey friends, welcome back. Bryce Henson, your fitness CEO, and want to encourage you, if you get value from this episode, give it a like. Today's topic for today is the daily routine that is going to set you up for success. Routines, I'm just throwing my papers right now. That's how excited I am to be providing this content today, and routines are extremely important, but I'm going to give you some pointers on that are probably a little bit unconventional that are going to set yourself up for long-term success from a professional and a personal perspective. But before I do, I want to give you a little insight and share an experience back in the day that really woke myself up to the value of structure and routines because very candidly, I wasn't always structured. I didn't always have a morning uh, routine. I wasn't always disciplined. In fact, uh, you know, growing up, I used to stay up really late, wake up really late. You know, that went through high school and college. And I remember my first semester at uh, Michigan State, I was excited. Now, granted, I woke up a little bit earlier in high school because you have to be there by 7 or 7.30, whatever the case may be. So I thought overly ambitious, well, shoot, college classes start at 8 o'clock. They're more condensed. If I schedule my classes from 8 o'clock, I can finish by 10.30 every day. That's going to be a recipe for success. What I realized was I wasn't going to have any structure in my life. I was going to live in a dorm. There was going to be a lot of parties and guys and girls and all always, you know, an opportunity to hang out and stay up way too late. So my friend, if you were going to sleep at 2.30, 3.30, even 4.30 in the morning, trying to wake up and get a, get to an eight o'clock class, that is a recipe for disaster. So needless to say, I missed, I did a calculation on the back end. I think I missed 60% of my classes my freshman year. Somehow I managed uh, to be able to get a 2.3. I got a C both in biology and chemistry, but I walked away from that experience be like, wow, and I'm going to adjust my uh, class schedule moving forward because, um, yeah, I'm not an early riser. That was at least my thought that went through my mind, but that was a false nomer, if you will. And I just really hadn't developed structure, discipline, and a tough mindset. So my college career went on, and I will never forget, I was reading a book my senior year, and there was a quote from uh, Benjamin Franklin, and it said something along the effects of early to bed, early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. And even though I did not take action in that moment, I put that note in the back of my mind. I thought that was some sage wisdom that I wanted to apply, or at least I intended to apply uh, to my life in the future. And thankfully I did. Um, so in any case, uh, my last semester at school, as I was reading a bunch of books, and I don't even remember the specific class, but I graduated with an advertising degree at Michigan State. And it was the very last class, the very last semester. I graduated in December of, 20, uh, of 2004. And uh, I remember vividly the marketing or advertising teacher or whatever it was, um, you know, was very, very clear that this was a group, you know, project, if you will. And uh, the last assignment, which is a project that you need to be able to deliver and present at the very end with your group, uh, will make up 50% of your grade. So if you fail that assignment, if you skip that assignment, if you miss out, if you don't show up, whatever the case may be, if you miss that project and that presentation at the very end of class, you will fail. He was very, very, very clear. So, you know, credit to my professor then. So of course, you know, I put that in the back of my mind. I already I went to school for three years. I thought I got one semester uh, left. Yes, I did graduate in three and a half semesters. So proud of that. But uh, off we went and met with my, you know, group throughout the course of the semester. And then last month or so things started to really pick up. And, you know, like college kids, we procrastinate, but ultimately, uh, the last month, we started meet, uh, meeting weekly and then bi-weekly and uh, up to the main event. And the week was there. The final uh, presentation was set and uh, we got everything prepared. And I remember vividly the night before, um, every all the group had already aligned. The night before, I still had some things to do on my portion to make sure that I was set, I was good to go because we needed to arrive. We agreed as a group that we're going to arrive at 8 o'clock just to go through it one, uh, one time together as a group. And then our class started around 8.30 and then we were the second or third uh, group that was going to present. So that was the plan. So I was staring at the barrel, okay, of this, uh, the evening before uh, the, the final group presentation, and I procrastinated. Uh, so 
I so put some things off and I finally got, you know, into the work to, you know, clean up and finalize my project. And I started work about 10 in the evening and then 10 became 11, 11 became midnight, midnight became one, one became two. And I realized, holy smokes, I'm about to pull an all nighter because I still have things to do. Uh, so thankfully I was able to execute with some coffee and all that and stayed up till about 5:30 in the morning. And finally at 5:30 AM after pulling an all nighter, I was like, yes, I'm finally have all my ducks in a row. I'm ready to present. I'm ready to prepare. But here's my dilemma. I'm exhausted right now. And I got a little bit of time before class starts. So I thought it was a great idea. Now that everything was sorted, I could either do one of two things. I could power through and potentially just be fried, or I can take a convenient little cat nap for about 90 minutes, rest, recharge, get rejuvenated. So that way I can wake up at seven o'clock, um, walk to class was about half an hour, 40, uh, 40 minutes away in the blistering cold, I might add. Um, but that way I can be there before eight o'clock. I'm a bit more refreshed and I can present better. And then we're going to get a solid uh, score and off we go. So that was the thought until this day. I don't know what happened because I could swear to you. I set my alarm for 7 a.m. It was probably 7 p.m. Um, but at 530 after pulling this all nighter, taking a quote unquote 90 minute power nap to make sure I'm rested and rejuvenated, I fall asleep. And I'm thinking I'm going to wake up in 90 minutes to the sight of or the sound of my alarm, but that does not happen. Instead, I hear this boom, 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 boom. And I'm thinking, what the hell? So I just like, my eyes pop open. I wasn't living in a fraternity at that time. Uh, they, that was the year before. Um, but we had a house and it was almost like a frat house. And there was a bunch of guys living there. And I was living in the basement um, for 200 bucks a month or something crazy that I negotiated. But my uh, bedroom was right underneath the door in the main uh, in the main entrance. So as you would imagine, when as it turns out, I don't know who the, who the heck was pounding the door. Well, as it turns out, it was my buddy Anthony pounding on the door. I woke up like a bad out of hell. I popped up. I was so confused. I look at my watch and as it turns out, it's 820 in the morning. So this is 20 minutes past the time I'm supposed to be there with my group uh, to do a little pre walkthrough. And then my class was starting in, in 10 minutes and I live about a half an hour or 40 minute walk in the cold weather. I did not have a car in college. So as you would imagine, I'm freaking out the flashbacks of my professor saying, if you miss this, if you do not execute this assignment, you will fail. So I'm I'm just thinking I'm going to fail. I have to stay, you know, extend my stay. I'm going to have to spend more money on credits. Like all the nightmare was passing me by, but I run upstairs and lo and behold, as I mentioned, it's my buddy, Anthony. And I'm thinking to myself, like, how is my buddy Anthony here? He's like, Bryce, get your ass in the car. Let's go. So within five minutes, I go downstairs. I, you know, change. I don't even shower. I put my you know stuff together, put my backpack. I jump in his car and uh, this guy was a lifesaver and ended up driving me a mile and a half, you know, on the campus, drops me off and. Uh, was able to you know connect with my team as you would imagine they were less than pleased they were giving me the death eyes um, but was able to make it there about 15 20 minutes after class started and then thankfully our present our group didn't present till about 20 minutes after I got there and was it perfect no uh, but was able to deliver and um, you know that was an interesting um, I guess relief uh, of a really anxiety rich story now you might be asking how did your buddy Anthony you know know to, to knock on your door and pick you up well thankfully we had had a mutual friend in the group. So uh, in the group that I was participating in, as I looked at my cell phone, uh, I had a ton of missed calls, as you imagine. Uh, all my group members were trying to reach out to me, but I was sleeping. That quote unquote 90 minute power nap went wrong. Um, so thankfully, one of my group members realized that we had a mutual friend in common, Anthony. So he calls Anthony. He's like, yo, dude, where's Bryce? You're in the same fraternity with him. Anthony wakes up. He's like, I have no idea. But Anthony being a solid dude and Anthony, if you're watching this man, so much love and gratitude to you, my friend. Uh, but it was able to wake up, drive about a mile and a half to get me and then drop me off at camp. Campus. So, so grateful for this day. And uh, if you can believe at the very end, I graduated a semester early. I bought myself a big Michigan state flag, which our colors are green and white and uh, green is the background of the flag white. There's the big S if you will. And I had all my friends, um, you know, with Sharpie marker, just, you know, sign their name and a little a quote or, you know, something that we, you know, had an inside joke on. And I'll never forget. I still have this flag in my uh, house today and it says, don't sleep in uh, dash signed by Anthony. And, uh, 
uh, that is uh, the story of lack of structure, of sleeping in, of not being disciplined. And thankfully for me, it worked out. But at the end of the day, that I left things up to chance. And you do not want to leave things up to chance because your success is way more important to that. So I want to start there. Now, this all in mind, I want to preface before I jump into my routine, I want to give you a little insight, if you will. Um, number one, if you are anything like me or were anything like me, or maybe you are right now and undisciplined and you lack a good routine, you lack structure, know that you can change in an instant. Uh, just because you've been one way does not mean you can't snap out of it literally uh, the next day. So I want to empower you with that. Don't let the baggage of your past define you in the future so you can make a change. Uh, additionally, number point number two, as I preface this before I get into my specific routine, you do you. At the end of the day, I'm going to give you some structure and guidance. And what I would highly encourage you, take what works, take some things within my guidelines, but apply them to you and your life because your situation is probably a little bit different. And there's some intricacies there just as long as that you, you pay attention to these guiding principles. Um, additionally, one of the biggest things my coaching clients or my franchise partners or my team talk to me about because I'm highly disciplined, I'm highly structured, is, well, Bryce, I can't do your routine. I can't wake up early. I'm a night owl. And my response to that is if you are genuinely a night out and if you genuinely GSD get shit done uh, with great amount of force uh, in the evening. So I say, hey, do you, you can adjust and modify. In fact, my wife, Tatiana, she's a night out and she executes very, very well. One of my best friends in the fitness industry, massively successful. He's also a night owl. But I would say for 99% of the population, when you say, quote unquote, you are a night owl, it really means you are binging on Netflix, you are on YouTube watching things that are not productive, that are not going to move the needle for your life. So I want you to be honest with yourself as part of this preface, because just because you think you're a night owl, I want to pressure test that in a little bit, because the vast majority of people that stay up late are literally putting garbage in their brain, watching Netflix that's not going to be productive um, to move them into the direction they need to move, okay? So please be be honest with yourself. The last thing I want to uh, touch on before I jump into the specifics of my routine, it's an evolution, okay? What my routine right, is right now, it's evolved and it always is evolving as well. So maybe you're waking up at eight o'clock and you're thinking, I can never wake up that early, Bryce. Well, maybe you're not going to go from eight o'clock to 4.30 in the morning, but maybe you can go from eight o'clock to seven o'clock or eight o'clock to 6.45. So that's also something that I want to point out, um, you know, as you uh, take a look at this particular episode and begin to apply it. Uh, into your life. So without further ado, I'm going to jump into my routine to set you up for success. And uh, here we go. Hey there, my name is Bryce Henson, CEO of Fit Body Bootcamp, and you might know me as the host of this podcast, but what you might not know is that I started my fitness business journey as a Fit Body location owner. And since 2012, I've been able to impact my community while creating financial freedom, both for myself and my family too. You see, by using Fit Body's proven business model, we give you all the support and guidance you need to be your own boss and build a business that aligns with your passion for fitness. And being we are the absolute best at launching and scaling our franchise franchise partners gyms, we are now excited to announce our 100 member guarantee. Now you might be thinking, Bryce, what is that? Well, we are so confident that we'll launch your Fit Body Bootcamp location with well over 100 paying members from day one on your grand opening that if we don't, We'll run your marketing till we do. That's how confident we are in our ability to support you and guide you through this process. So if you're interested in creating more income through impact, click the link somewhere around this video to apply. First and foremost, I am always uh, of the mindset that planning uh, creates better execution. So for me, I'm always looking the night before what I have in my agenda, my calendar for the next day. In addition to that, on Sunday evening, I do that for the whole week. So my subconscious mind, mind knows the big meetings, the big conversations I have, you know, the really important things for the whole week. But then a granular perspective on a day to day basis, I always make sure to review my calendar for the next day because that way it allows my subconscious to begin solving the problems the night before. So I guess what I'm trying to say is your daily routine starts the night before. Always in bed by 8.30, um, on a 8, 8.30 p.m. on a daily basis, and I'm asleep by 9 o'clock, okay? That is really, really important because I wake up at 4.30. The bell rings at 4.30 and off I go. Now, that is the last possible time I wake up. Sometimes my body wakes me up at 3.30 or 3.45 or 4 o'clock, and depending on the day, sometimes I jump out it and get after it. But regardless, no matter what, 4.30 is when the bell rings 
things, and that is the deadline, the target that my butt is up and out of bed. I also want to provide some visibility, even though I'm an energetic, I'm a positive, I'm an enthusiastic guy, and I've become an early uh, early bird throughout the years. I wasn't always uh, like that. I don't wake up excited and you know full of energy and vibrancy. I wake up pissed off, angry, and thinking to myself, I do not want to execute this day. I'm just being very candid with you. These are the thoughts that go through my mind every single day. So if you're like me and you're like, well, I'm not a morning person. I don't wake up chipper. That's okay. I don't either. Okay. You need to earn your happy. You need to earn your chipper. It's about getting your butt out of bed and start moving. And speaking of which, that uh, is a great segue to my workout, which starts at 5 a.m. every day with the exception of one time a week, which I live about a half an hour uh, from my uh, Fit Body Bootcamp location in Mission Viejo, California. So on Tuesday mornings at the moment is when I get down there and I work out at 5.15 is when the session starts. But if the session start at five o'clock, I'd work out there at five o'clock, but I'm a little limited to by that. So there's some intricacies there, but, uh, throughout the rest of the week, I have a, I built out an in-house gym or in-house him in home gym. And uh, I'm hitting the weights by five o'clock. And also keep in mind, I'm not crushing three hour CrossFit workouts. If you are more power to you. And if that's working out for you, freaking awesome. For me, I'm a product of my product. We use 30 minute circuit trainings at Fit Body Bootcamp. And you know what? It keeps me lean. It keeps me in shape. Now, am I a famous bodybuilder? Am I Arnold Schwarzenegger or Phil Heath or uh, Jay Cutler? No. If I wanted to be them or like them, I need to train way more, but I want to train so that way I'm healthy. I look good. I feel good. I'm in shape. You know, I'm 190 pounds. I have 11% body fat. For me, that's a big win. Um, So that's how I like to keep my conditioning. So all I'm trying to say is you don't need to spend hours at the gym. 30 minutes a day, just like me at 5 a.m. will do you wonders and, um, you know, help you long term. So uh, that works for me. After my workout at five, uh, five o'clock, which finishes about 530, I jump my butt into the cold plunge, and that's a new innovation that I just got. I used to have a pool. I still have a pool uh, in California. If you can believe, the mornings and evenings are still cool even in the summertime. Uh, so there's a few months uh, during the course of the year where I can use my pool as cryotherapy, but I bought an awesome cold plunge. I think I need to get an affiliate link because I've been talking about them so much, um, but it's a cold chamber with water, and uh, I submerge myself for three minutes at 40-degree water on a daily basis. Okay, that's right after my workout, and for me, that lights me up. And there's so much medical benefits and research on the benefits of cold treatment from reduction of inflammation to increasing, you know, your happy positive endorphins to increasing your blood, blood flow. For me, it changes my state. Tony Robbins uh, talks about this all the time. If you want to change your state, you want to change where you're at mentally. This is what it does. It changes my body chemistry and it just gets me dialed in, ready to go every single day. So after my 5 a.m. workout or my circuit, if you will, uh, then I hit the cold, cold plunge And then boom, I'm showered and I'm off to our headquarters where I'm filming this particular podcast right now. And I'm there at 630 on a daily basis. And that's important because that way I can start working on my zone of genius on the things that I need to do to build the empire and uh, to continue on on that. Um, I don't schedule any meetings before 10 a.m. And that's really, really important. So I'm at my desk in my office at 630 on a daily basis. And I have three out three and a half hours before 10 o'clock, right as 10 o'clock arrives uh, for, you know, focus GSD time. Because what I do know to, uh, to be true is that later in the day, for good reason, your team needs you. They're, they're t- my team needs me. They're going to come on and ask me for support. I'm going to be in ton of meetings, whatever the case may be. So I know that that magic time from 6.30 a.m. to 10 a.m., it has to be uh, very productive because if it's not, uh, then I'm going to be subjected to other people's whims. And that's uh, a very, very challenging situation to be in. Um, so that all said, my friends, that is my routine. Now, I want to uh, be able to provide a little bit more additional insight and then finish out with some non-negotiables and then my takeaways for you so that way you can start implementing your own routine. So please keep in mind high level every day, okay, looks the same for me before 10 a.m. And that consistency, you know, creates, you know, better consistency, better production, better uh, execution long term. After 10 o'clock, all hell breaks loose. Then the days look very different. But my Mondays look like my Mondays. My Tuesdays look like my Tuesdays. My Wednesdays look like my Wednesdays. So that is consistent throughout the course. And that's really important routine is where efficiency optimization ride. Now I'm going to shoot probably another podcast episode because the biggest creativity and biggest uh, aha moments I have are usually when I'm not routine, when I'm traveling, when I'm you know changing my environment. So there is space for both. But in a day-to-day basis, when you know when I'm running my uh, business and I'm building my empire, I have to be routine. I have to be structured because that creates way more efficiency and a long-term 
long-term production. Um, also, th- uh, the last thing before I you know go through my non-negotiables is life has ebbs and flows. So this is the routine that is for me right now. Sometimes, depending on uh, my coaches or my facility, I change my workout at Mission Viejo Fit Body from Tuesdays to Wednesdays or to Mondays, whatever the case may be. So there's a little fluctuation by the season, um, maybe two or three times a year. My overall schedule adjusts, adjusts my, uh, minorly in the grand scheme of things, but also too, there's some wiggle room. But I caution you to get in the trap of you always changing things and always having a little bit of wiggle room. Because if I say that, then you might hear like, oh, wow, well, Bryce changes. He, he, you know, he has a little bit of wiggle room. Vast majority of you do not need wiggle room. You need to stick to something that works, stay structured, stay disciplined. I promise you, your execution will increase. Um, so this all in mind to put a bow and really reinforce my non-negotiables. Because if you break everything down, okay, I really want you to wait, uh, take away some nuggets. And for me, here are the non-negotiables. Once I wake up, I work out. That is non-negotiable, number one. Number two is I do a cold plunge. I change my say to get cold water. It, it fires up the, the immune system. It increases the endorphins. It makes me feel good. It makes me ready to attack the day. That is number two. Uh, number three is... I'm at work. I'm starting to work at 6.30 a.m. And that is so important. So many other routines out there I've heard. You do all this stuff and you're not working until like 9 or 9.30 or 10 o'clock. And the day by then is passed away. So for me, okay, 6.30, which is non-negotiable number three, is where I need to be working at my desk. And then non-negotiable number four is no meetings before 10 o'clock with the exception of emergency. So my assistant knows nothing on my calendar before 10 o'clock because if it does happen, then my productivity long-term will wane. So my friends, that is the structure. So now they've given you the framework. I want to leave you with four big takeaways. So that way you can take the context and the context that you've learned today and apply this into your routine. So number one is you want to pick a consistent work time and then reverse engineer the process for there. And that's very, very important. So I just gave you so much context in terms of my routine and starting the night before. But really, if you want to get super focused on the way I've done this, I picked the work, the work time, which is 6.30 a.m. That is the time that anchors everything else. So once I know that 6.30 a.m. is when I'm going to start my work, then I can reverse engineer the the rest. Now, this in mind, I would strongly recommend that you pick the workout time either 7.30 at the absolute latest or earlier, even if you're quote unquote a night owl, because what's going to happen is if you start working at 8 o'clock or 8.30 or 9 or 10, the reality of the situation, if you want to be the best version of you, if you want to build an empire, if you want to progress in your career and your life, open a business, be super successful, and you're not starting your work, your magic time until 8, 9, 10 in the morning, my friends, life and productivity and success is going to pass you by. So at the very latest, I would strongly recommend 730 for you. Uh, Once you do that, Okay, once you pick your starting to work time, which is bullet point number one, number two is you're going to reverse engineer the rest. And uh, that also means, okay, what time, if you need to start working at this time, that means what time do you need to wake up? What time do you need to work out? What time do you need to go to bed the evening before? This is all really important. If you have that one focal time, then the second bullet point is you can reverse everything else, including your workout time, your wake up time, and most importantly in this situation, your go to bed time. Because don't fool yourself. Don't think you're going to wake up at 4.30 if you go to bed at midnight, that's just not going to happen, or at least it's not going to happen sustainably. So be honest with yourself, pick the workout uh, work time is number one. And then number two is reverse engineer the rest. Number three, I want to reiterate this one more time, unless you are exception, which you are probably not, I strongly recommend that you work out in the morning. Okay, there's so much science that's going into, you know, getting your blood moving and and circulation and increasing your endorphins. And I'm also into the firm belief that a body in motion stays in motion. Okay, also the opposite is true. The body at rest stays at rest. That's why it's so hard to get up in the morning. But then once you get up, once you start tacking the day, then all of a sudden momentum builds. Okay, you stay in motion and then you can start stacking wins. So I would highly encourage you again, unless you're, uh, have a weird schedule or you're an exception, which chances are 99% of you watching this or listening to or not, you want to work out in the morning, get that blood going. And that's going to set you up and stack your wins, which is going to escalate throughout the course of the day. 
And then lastly, number four, and the reality of the situation is you're a human, I'm a human, we all fall off track, that's the reality of the situation. So when you do, which happens occasionally, now thankfully it doesn't happen much, but it does happen to me occasionally. In fact, I was just out about a month and a half ago delivering a uh, mastermind coaching program, which is a coaching program, a uh, leadership focused program for the top elite owners within the Fit Body Bootcamp brand. It was an awesome event pouring into them about leadership and mindset, sales and marketing. It was incredible. I was on a high like I typically am when I pour into my franchise partners. But then afterwards, when I got back to California, while it was such a high, the following seven to 14 days, I was on a little low, a lull. I lost the energy, the enthusiasm, my quote unquote motivation was not there. Thankfully, my habits and my discipline carry through. However, I slacked off of my routine for a period of about 10 days. So what did I do when I realized this and I had a hard time kind of snapping back in? I used public accountability, which is number four. When you slack off, okay, when you get off course, that's okay, dust off shoulder, soldier, but get back up and march you go. And the reality of the situation is you're, that's going to happen. But when you do, okay, hold yourself accountable. Communicate with your team. Communicate with your family. Communicate with your loved ones. For me, I sent a broadcast out to my uh, franchise partners letting you know, hey, team, this is where I'm at, uh, and gave them the, the insight. And by sharing my vulnerabilities, it, one, connected with me, with my franchise partners, my clients a lot more, okay? But number two, it actually held me more accountable, and I realized, you know what? I get a step in my game, and miraculously, within two days after, you know, communicating to my franchise partner as I was back on the tr- uh, back on track dialing in my routine so that is number four you're going to fall off track when that does use public accountability to get your butt back on your routine because when you do then you can dominate your morning you can dominate your day you can dominate your week you can dominate your month you can dominate your year and ultimately my friend you can dominate your life so that is what I have to you today I hope you take this seriously you make this a part of your, your priority adjust your routine so you can be more productive and you can live a life well lived. Well, friends, that's all I have for today. And remember, no one is coming to save you. You must save yourself. And the time is now. 